This is the main setup screen of the software. The first option in here is Client Info. This option is basically allowing the software to ask you for your client's info with every purchase. If you want to collect your client's info and attach it to purchases, then uh, this is useful in advertisement or marketing if you want to have their contact. It's useful in your own analytics if you want to find out who is your best customer, how many times they're returning, or if they're not returning enough, maybe to analyze why not. So um, that is very useful to businesses that want to do those things. If you don't want to, you can just click no and it will not ask you for clients info with every purchase. The next one is client notifications and it has two different options in it. The first one is uh, whether or not you want to be notified or reminded of a client's birthday that is coming up. And if you want this option, then you just select this box and designate in here how many days in advance you want to be reminded of the client's birthday. The second one is uh, for the appointment reminders. If you're using our appointment to schedule uh, our appointment uh, grid to schedule appointments for your customers in here, um, this is a useful tool where our software can actually send SMS and email messages to remind your customers of an upcoming appointment. Let's say within three days of an advance or if you want earlier than that, you just designate in here how many days and our software will send them those reminders. Picture logo. This one in here, if you uh, select a picture and put it in this field, then uh, the software will display that picture in the main screen as your logo and it will also uh, print it out on all the receipts as your logo. So what you do is you basically click this browse button to browse through your hard drive, designate where the picture is, select the picture, open it and it puts in the path in here. You know. Uh, other than that, if you don't want to browse, you can always type in the path if you know the exact path. But the error proof method method is to use the browse button. Uh, networking is about um, whether or not you want to network or use the software in a network. Right now, as it's not networked, this is just used on one computer. The default um, selection in here is or actually the software to look into the database right on the C drive wherever the software was installed in the POS folder and here's the database of course. Um, if you want to network what you would do is you would create a network first of course and designate a computer that will host the shared or common uh, database Then you would copy the database from whatever terminal you have it on onto that shared folder so it can be shared with all the rest of the terminals and you designate that shared folder in here through the browse button of course that's the smartest you just browse through your home group or network and select right through the folders where that is shared and you point to the database it is always going to be this one sm.db3 that you're going to share for all the computers to point to and of course the main computer or the server can always just or should always just point to it like this. If it's on that server, the software is going to be used on that server, it should point to its own hard drive. There's no need to uh, show the network path. But if you don't understand this or if you're not doing networking, then this should remain untouched. Otherwise, it's not going to uh, be useful to meddle with it. Invoice numbering is an option that lets you put a number. Uh, from where you want the invoice numbering to start like let's say you're an existing business and you have gotten up to a certain number of invoices before you've acquired our software so now you just want to continue from that number where you left off you can just choose not to start at one and just start at whatever invoice number you know you're at backup that's an option to uh, do backups of the database. The entire database of the software gets copied with every exiting of the software. When you exit the software, it means you're all done with it. On every exit, the entire database gets copied into a safe place that you designate in here. You can either manually type in the path or you can just 
browse and you know designate it let's say I'll just do the C drive like this and you're just gonna do it in the root directory of the C drive um, color ID is a handy feature that can utilize your color ID uh, function of your phone line of your landline and uh, if you have a modem on your computer this will actually uh, help you display the information of the color right on the computer right into our software and even further than that it's not just a simple color ID it helps you easily it actually does this for you it puts it opens up the um, customers info screen and it pre fills the fills the data for you it fills out the the customer's name fills out their phone number so if they're not an existing customer you have some of the information already pre-filled and you have to fill in less information to save that as a customer or if it's an existing customer you can see it right away it's going to pull it up and you can see who it is while you're talking on the phone with them without having to actually type anything or click anything um, for this you need to designate the modem port. usually it's com one two three or four uh, if you have a uh, modem installed in one of those com ports and then you need to designate the modems at command for enabling color id to enable the color id functionality on that modem and of course for that you need to contact the manufacturer read the technical manual of the modem and we have given some uh, samples in here these are the most widely used ones we strongly recommend that you don't you know just guess uh, that you actually contact somebody and 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 or read the technical manual and actually find the exact uh, command also the modems AT command for this disabling auto answer because you don't want that modem to actually answer uh, the phone call you still want to pick up the phone yourself and then autocomplete which is the last uh, option in this menu is um, a pretty simple self-explanatory option if you have this turned on then while you're typing something in one of the fields of our software our software is going to try and guess what you're typing and suggest the rest of that um, you know word that you're typing like let's say you're in the item ID field in the main sales screen and you're trying to type in a certain item ID of a certain item in inventory the software quickly browses through your inventory to see what pre-existing uh, inventory in there matches what you're trying to input and will suggest something thus making your uh, workload uh, much less because it's going to autocomplete if you don't want to do this you turn it off it's also uh, recommended to turn it off if you're using a barcode scanner there's no reason for the software to dig through a database when you're just gonna scan the entire ID uh, so right now to save the changes I'm just gonna go ahead and click submit changes and this info just popped up saying that this was updated successfully but the software needs to restart in order for the changes to take effect so we'll just click OK in here 